Oh my goodness, is this roasted leg of lamb so delicious. I seriously just crushed like five slices. It's amazing. If you don't make this, you are crazy. It's so simple to prepare. It's very easy to cook. You will love this recipe. Whenever I'm making lamb, it's always one of my best days because it's hands down one of my favorite all-time proteins. It's juicy, it's tender, the flavors are fantastic. Now for this recipe that I'm going to make, I'm using a bone-in leg of lamb. Perhaps maybe you can only get a boneless leg of lamb. It's going to be totally fine because it still applies to the same procedures that I'm going to use. But first, we need to knock out a little prep. You good? Let's cook. We are going to begin by finely mincing up a whole bunch of fresh garlic cloves. It's going to be used to season up our leg of lamb. And you know me, I hate chopping garlic, so I'm just going to simply run it through my garlic press, get all of the extra goodness that's on the end there, put it in a bowl, and simply set it to the side. And then next, I've got some fresh herbs, starting with rosemary. Now, to get all of these herbs off, what I like to do is hold the sprig and then pull down, which will release all the leaves. We are going to leave these whole just like this. It's going to season up our lamb as well. And then I've got some fresh thyme. We do the exact same process. I love thyme. It's probably hands down my favorite herb. It's so versatile. It's got some great flavors in there. It's going to go excellent in this dish. So set that to the side and now it's time to break out our big old bone in leg of lamb. Now this lamb is about seven pounds. You can go all the way up to nine pounds. And of course, if you're using a boneless lamb, you're looking at about two to four pounds. Now what I want to do is take a very sharp knife and score it almost like making a chess board. So starting from the bone all the way to the back, slice all the way through about a half inch to three quarters inch deep. And then again, like I said, a chess board, go back and go against the slices that you did before and absolutely do this on both sides. What this is going to do is allow for a lot of our seasoning, herbs, and garlic to get down into those cracks and crevices and season everything up. Now to start, we are going to add on some extra virgin olive oil and then definitely take the time to rub this in and again on both sides. Now taking the finely minced garlic, we are going to rub it in and you'll immediately notice that the garlic goes into those little slices that we made that's again gonna help season up everything and make it taste delicious now for the herbs we're gonna add on those thyme leaves and those rosemary leaves and again rub them in I can't say it enough on both sides it doesn't need to just be on the top this is a big piece of meat and it needs as much flavor as possible so on all sides is what you do and then this part is optional I'm just gonna add on a little bit of dry white wine gonna help season it up as well and then of course very generously season on both sides with sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper and be generous here remember this is a seven pound piece of meat it's not a small six to eight ounce filet mignon so what i'm going to do at this point is completely wrap it up with plastic wrap and then we're heading right over to the refrigerator and when it comes to marinating, I always suggest overnight, at least 12 hours, but you could absolutely take this to 48 hours for even more flavor. Now, if you were in Italy and you were making a recipe like this, you may see a bunch of different parts of lamb. You may see a rack, you may see ribs, you may see just a lamb shank, a bone in, boneless, you name it. All parts are good to eat when in Italy. So if you can only get your hands on a few of these things, just follow the procedures. Like I said earlier, it still applies. Here's what we do now. Pull out the lamb after it's been marinating overnight or again for at least 12 hours and all the way up to 48 hours. Let's take off the plastic wrap. Fantastic. It smells awesome in here. So what I'm going to do is just put some gloves on here so I can transfer it. We are going over to a large roasting pan that I put a rack right into the center of that pan. Let me stop really quick and say, if you do not have a rack to put this on, no worries. Just set it right down in your pan. What the rack does is really helps just brown up the bottom part. You're not going to lose a ton of flavor, so don't quite worry about it. Now we're going in the oven. Go ahead and take that lamb in the pan, go over to the oven, and what we're going to do is put it in at 425 degrees for 25 minutes, get it nice and browned up, and then we're going to come back and turn the heat back down to 350 degrees, and it's going to take about 80 to 90 minutes for this to finish cooking. 
All right, a few things. The reason I started it off at 425 degrees Fahrenheit is really for two main reasons. One, it's to help get the chill off of it because remember, it's been sitting in the refrigerator all night. And secondly, it's to help activate that browning process a little bit more quickly. Now, if you are in Italy and you are eating this for Easter, or if you're just in an Italian family, you wanna eat this for Easter, you may have heard it called Abaccio al Forno. Now, traditionally, this is served with potatoes. Even though potatoes aren't served in the name, if you said, I'm making a baccio al forno, people would automatically know that you're serving it with potatoes. So with about 30 minutes left in the cooking process, we're going to get started on making these so easy, so good, and they go great with this lamb. Here we go. So I've got about three pounds of yellow potatoes here. Obviously, you can absolutely use russet potatoes. Even if you had red potatoes, fine. You know I always promote to use what you have. But what I'm gonna do is slice these up pretty thick. So slice them in half, turn them, and then I make two or three slices. As long as it's about an inch to two inches in size, that's good. And then I've got a shallot. If you do not have a shallot, absolutely just use a red onion. We're going to slice the ends off, slice it in half. Of course, remove that outside peel. Then I'm just going to turn them and lay them down and thinly slice them just like this. This is just going to add some great flavor to the potatoes. You might also see in this recipe some tomatoes or peppers as well. So go ahead and add them to the potatoes. We're going over to the cooktop and we're going to add some olive oil to a large nonstick pan. Now add the potatoes and the shallots right in there. And then right after you do add it, spread them out just to sort of evenly space them in the pan and then generously season them with sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. And what we're going to do is cook these for about 10 to 12 minutes on the stovetop. Don't get anxious about constantly moving them around. Make sure they have enough time to brown up. That's what makes them so flavorful. And then after that time, once they're a little bit brown, we need to finish cooking them. So we're going to add them to the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now for how long does this cook? I like lamb around medium. So I pull it at about 135 degrees Fahrenheit. When using a bone in leg of lamb like I am doing, and mine's about seven pounds, you're looking at between 15 and 20 minutes a pound. So total with that 425 degree process, you're looking at about 90 to 120 minutes. But hey, you may be saying Chef Billy Parisi, I want this thing lamb el asador style, which is like literally fall off the bone. Think smoked pork shoulder where it just literally falls right off the bone. What you would want to do off the bat is completely cover it in foil, put it in the oven on 325 degrees for four to four and a half hours. We really want to cook this. And then take the foil off for the last 30 minutes, turn the heat up to 375 and continue to cook it. You want it to be in between 202 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit internally. I gave you two options, you pick. Now let's have a look at our lamb. Go ahead and take the lamb right out of the oven. Let's put it on the cutting board. Looks amazing and it's perfect because at this exact same time, our potatoes are gonna be finished as well. It smells amazing in here. I can't say it enough. My wife who doesn't even like lamb commented and told me how crazy good it smells in here. That's how awesome it is. She doesn't even like lamb, loves the smell of this. So my friends, I say it to you every single week. It's all about understanding these fundamental basic cooking techniques, how to properly marinate, how to roast a leg of lamb. Maybe this is the first time you've even cooked lamb. It's gonna be so delicious for you. You know what the marinade is, you prepare it yourself, and the homemade food from scratch will always taste better, just like in this lamb, I tell you all the time. Now, of course, we're gonna slice this up, plate up in slow-mo. So using a very large slicing knife, if you don't have one, a regular chef's knife will be totally fine. We're just going to slice into this. And again, you could start to see that beautiful pink. This is a perfect medium internal temperature. And now to plate up, I'm just going to add some potatoes right onto a large platter. You could actually serve it up in the roasting pan as well if you'd like. And then just lay that lamb right over top. And then I'm going to garnish with a little more fresh herbs. Looks fantastic. And man, oh man, check out this beauty.
Seriously, such a delicious dish. You will love the juiciness and the tenderness of it. Doesn't matter which way you cook it. Both are fantastic. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Definitely like and share this video and check out this video right here. I made it just for you specifically. You'll love it. We'll see you on there.